Hey everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be pruning some stone fruits. Uh, we have just about everything pruned now. Like we've done the apples, the pears, the persimmons, the jujubes, the figs, all of it, uh, except for the stone fruits and the European grapes. And that stuff, you need to wait longer uh, before you can prune them, sometime in early spring, um, late winter. And it's really all about disease with the stone fruits, right? We want to prevent that from happening. We want to make sure that in the forecast, it's not going to rain uh, before we prune. It's really important. Um, some other things I think are really important that we're going to talk about is knowing how your tree fruits. Okay, does it fruit on New Year's growth, last year's growth, or two-year-old wood, as an example? So it could be one-year-old wood, two-year-old wood, you know, it could be any number of things, depending on what it is you guys are doing. I think that's really important and kind of developing a strategy around that. Um, you can do this yourself, right? Um, you don't need to follow guidelines that I'm going to set for you guys or guidelines that people have recommended. You can just do this, your, you know, figure out your own little path and, and do this however you want to do it. Um, every tree is different. Every yard is different. So... Even though I'm going to give you guys some recommendations, I'm trying to give you guys general recommendations here. Um, these are my cherry trees behind me. They're semi-dwarf. We're going to move over there to the Espaillade peaches in just a moment. But I want to talk about these first. Um, some things in particular. We have a nice little deer. It's just the nicest deer that comes through here and makes its way this way towards the cherry trees. And inevitably, every summer, or I should say every spring, he gets a little taste of them. And as a result, I've removed most of the lower growth. So that was priority number one. Um, I also wanted to make sure that these trees are not getting too big. I want to form a nice little canopy with these. Um, I want to keep them, because they're so close together here, I want to keep a lot of that growth out of the middle to a minimum and have most of these trees grow out in the other direction away from each other. Um, I kind of want them to be bush-like, have a, a larger canopy, a dense canopy, um, if I can, and that's really the goal of what I've been decided to do this year. And as you can see, we've made some nice little cuts. Nothing too drastic, but we did reduce the height quite a bit because I don't want these trees to get too tall. Uh, the sun about midday is somewhere around here and if this trees are too big it's going to shade out what's on the patio which would be the potted figs and those take priority over the cherries um, one thing about the cherries is that store-bought quality actually is pretty similar to homegrown quality and if i were to do this all over again i wouldn't grow sweet cherries probably would grow some other cherries like bush cherries or sour cherries that are a bit more problem free than the the sweet cherries right the sweet cherries can really get attacked by rot and other diseases they're not really the longest lived trees either especially in my climate so you know it's all up to you guys and where you guys live and your situation but there are other things that I would rather grow um, one thing I want to mention here about the cherries is that they flower in clusters I can get the camera to focus for you this is essentially a nice little cluster of flowers here there's about five to seven little buds each of those will turn into a cherry and they fruit on or they form I should say on two-year-old wood I guess they can probably form I'm not entirely sure but they can form on older wood as well but they'll pretty much stay here for the remainder of their lives i can come in here and thin this out these little buds but for the most part we want to be focusing on getting a lot of this two-year-old wood and limiting as much one-year-old wood as we can so it's kind of a bit of a, a, a problem there um, too much one-year-old wood means we're going to have a huge tree and too much well there's no such thing as too much two-year-old wood <laughs> but we definitely want to make sure that we're getting a nice little canopy set up a permanent structure i think is really what i want to come back to 
and really keep these things under control that way. So that's kind of really the basics of what I've decided to do is prune out the lower growth for the deer, um, kind of control the growth so it's not growing into each other in its own little respective area. And also keeping the number of one year old wood kind of to a minimum, right? I mean, this is about, you know, an, a foot of growth here maybe. And that's it. I don't really want any one year old growth more than that. Um, I mean, of course it's gonna grow more than a foot every year, but we're gonna keep it trimmed back to about that. And that way we'll form a nice little, almost as if we were pollarding this in a way, we'll form nice little new branches here at a lower height than we would if we kind of just let it do its thing. Now let me show you guys the peaches, okay? The peaches are a spy aid. You're not really supposed to do this, but we've, we've done it. And these are my tips for this because I think you need to really get a little bit creative with these if you're gonna do this. Um, you can see here, this is what we pruned out. And I left this here for you guys to see. This is only the three-year-old wood. Um, obviously there's one-year-old wood up here, right? two-year-old wood as well but down here this is where the thick stuff is this is the three-year-old wood and this has just got to come out and the reason for that is that I can't really control the height of this and recycle new growth without doing that so we made a, we only made three cuts um, that's really it I didn't go crazy with these you can see we made one there and then two on this Red Haven peach right there. Um, peaches are a bit different, I wanna, I wanna mention here. They fruit on one, one year old wood, the new growth from last year, and they form these little buds. You can see that there really perfectly. Um, they'll form about two to three different buds, and that's will, that will be the flowers, whereas this bud here is really just a new branch. Um, so you have to look at these branches in a way and say, okay, how much fruit do I have and how much do I want? Last year, I really thinned this out. We got to about 100 peaches per tree. I think that's reasonable for someone like me. I don't need to eat more than 100 peaches. It's nice to be able to share, but... Um, you know, this stuff down here is really going to give me a nice little fruit set because this really has a nice little density of one-year-old wood. Um, and that's on the bottom tier that we're looking at. On the second tier, we've actually uh, got a similar situation, but it's a bit more vigorous, right? As you go up higher on the tree, you get more vigor. So I'm kind of keeping a lot of the lower stuff because that stuff's not going to grow all that much it's not really going to get in the way of anything too drastic the second tier we may want to thin this out a bit more and really space this out right so this is like let me give you an example this is a nice little system of branches here um, this this whole thing that we're looking at it's got two-year-old wood it's got some nice one-year-old branches that will fruit for me um, we want to space this out between another little section of two-year-old wood. This is another good example. So by doing that, we're keeping them apart from each other. They're not shading each other out. We're not encouraging disease. We're increasing airflow. Um, it's just better off overall for the tree. Um, and then we also need to do something important where we select new branches that will then become two-year-old branches this system next year so if we have a two-year-old little complex system of branches here this will turn three years old next year and I'll, i'm going to take this out i may keep on the lower tier i may let them stay here for about four years on the second tier it's going to be three years and the same thing on the top tier three years as well so any three-year-old wood has to come out but we also have to make room for new year old new year growth for that to become something in the future right we have to be thinking about the future we can't be so short blindsided here 
that we just completely forget about the fruit we're going to have a couple years from now. You know, that's really the goal of these trees in my mind is that's what I'm thinking about probably the most. We've got ourselves a nice form, okay? That should be your number one priority from the beginning. But once you get that form down, now you're trying to just manage the number of fruits that you want. So by doing this, right, by selecting the, the new wood, so like if this is a, a nice little permanent branch here, and this is a nice little permanent branch here, one of these two would make a really nice new system to turn into this or to this the following year. And then if we wanted, we could take out one of these and then that way we would have a constant recycling of new wood and new systems of branches. It gets a bit more complex as we get a bit higher and things really need to be pruned a bit more as we get higher. But it's a similar scenario. Let me give you guys a good example here. This is two year old wood. And you can follow this up and you'll see a whole different system of branches up there, just like we saw below. Right next to that is one year old wood that has grown quite vigorously. Or maybe it's even two year old wood. But you can definitely see this one back here. This is basically just one little shot of one year old wood, this guy back in there. So what we can do is that when this comes out next year, cause this will turn three years old this time next year, we take this out. This then looks just like that. And this will kind of replace that, right? So that's all we're doing is we're recycling. And you get over here into this section, these will become new branches to eventually become this two-year-old section of complex branches. So that's all we're doing. That's really it in a nutshell. And uh, I wish I could have said that in shorter words and less time, but uh, there you got it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so again, nothing really needs to be too crazy, but uh, I did summer prune these trees a bit. Um, so in, with the connection of summer pruning and winter pruning we really didn't do a whole lot to these trees what I will do is I'll come in here with the hand pruners and maybe take out a branch like this where it's kind of in the way a lot of crisscrossing branches look for damaged diseased or dead wood I don't have any of that on these trees um, you know they're pretty young but I think you guys kind of get the idea here so hopefully you enjoyed this one hopefully you learned something and if you did please let me know down below what you learned and uh i'll certainly be willing to um, help you guys if you have any questions below all right please subscribe like the video um, check out the website it's rossratty.wixsite.com we had to change the website a bit uh, the link to that will be in the description all right, guys, take care, and I'll catch you all soon.